Today we're going to check out a new board from Durgod. I've checked out some of their boards in the past and they've released some solid stuff for the pre-built market and this is their 6% board, the Durgod Venus. Opening out the box we have a quick start guide which you'll actually need. I thought this was a CD for the software but I was pleasantly surprised to get this. I'm assuming it's a coaster but I think it's also like a sample for the mouse pads, really cool inclusion though. We get a sticker and a cable velcro thing, a wire keycap puller, some food, a USB-A to USB-C cable, and a USB-C to USB-C. Nice that they include both, but I straight up hate having folded cables. They just look so bad on the table. So from now on, I'm gonna call them out. Always love a dust cover, and here's the keyboard itself. First impressions in the hands, it feels pretty solid. It is made from aluminium, so there's no flex or anything. And it's coming in at a decent 761 grams, which is like 100 grams more than like the Duffy 1 2 Mini and the N Pro, and I'll be referring to those boards later. Like many 60% boards, it has a very simplistic design, but essentially it's exactly like the 65% Hades. We have very thin bezels on the sides and bottom, with the header being thicker to accommodate the LED indicators for the caps lock and layers. There is quite a big gap between the keycaps and the bezels. Some may not like this as you can see the key switches, but I'm assuming that's what they were going for, especially with the RGB backlighting. Looking at the side profile, a real typical design really. Very clean, so basically we have a rectangle and then a wedge to give it some angle. And I like it, very simplistic and will fit into whatever environment. On the rear, again, nice and simple, and we have our USB Type-C port. The opening though is on the small side, so it'll be a hit and miss with other cables. On the bottom we have a couple of rubber feet to keep it sturdy on the desk. There are no flip up feet, but at this size especially that's quite normal. And a nice metal info plate which is a cool premium touch. So as said, this is an aluminium case, but the finish doesn't particularly enhance it. Alu boards tend to be anodized and straight away you can tell that it is metal, being smooth and also cold to the touch, but this has, I don't know what this is, I guess a powder coat finish. I mean, it looks fine, it's clean and pretty even, but doesn't have that metallic feel. To the touch it isn't that cold and honestly without lifting it, I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking that it's plastic. The keycaps are a huge improvement over the Haiti 65% that I had. First off, the font keeps its simplistic seamless look, which is great, but now they are double shot PBT plastic and are in a cherry profile, so shorter than the typical OEM profile keycaps. A real pleasant surprise for me. I love the cherry profile, how it's that bit shorter. I think it looks nicer, but it's just more comfortable to type on as well and sounds better in my opinion. As always, that's just a personal preference thing. And the spacebar has a little curve at the front, it's mainly towards the middle which my thumb does not go to, but it's nice to take a little edge off it. Being a 60% board, we only get the main area of the keyboards, so F rows, arrow keys, nav cluster, numpad all chopped off, which makes for a super compact keyboard that a lot of people do enjoy and can actually use. Obviously we have some space saving benefits for our desk, but also a smaller keyboard does give more room for your mouse and allows more natural arm positioning with the arms coming closer to the center. It definitely isn't for everyone though, and that includes myself. I love dedicated arrow keys and for sure a lot of people will miss those, but everything is still of course on the keyboard but on a secondary layer. So we have our nav keys, so like page up and down, insert home and all that on the right hand side, and the F row on top which are all accessible via the F and 1 key. Interestingly, the arrow keys are on the tap function, which isn't on the manual but is on the back of the box. So to turn on the tap mode we press F and 1 plus caps lock, and that allows us to use these four keys as our arrow keys, but only when we tap them. But if we hold them, they remain as the original function. Personally, I found it to be okay since I don't really use those keys except for the right shift, and as you can imagine, it works for the most part, but when you do want to use the original function, like typing out the dollar sign, it'll output 4, so you do have to hold it just that tiny fraction longer. However, we can just add the arrow keys to another layer, like normal, and for that we have to download the software, which is their Hera compiler. So just quickly looking through the layers, the arrow keys aren't there. Anyway, we have three profiles that we can customize, in which are accessible via the FN2 key, and then we have our layers, default, FN1, FN2, and FN1 plus FN2. You probably don't want to change anything on default, and yeah, you just have a bunch of space to do whatever you want on the other layers. 
So let's chuck on the arrow keys on IJKL. You can of course put them wherever you want and it's all pretty self-explanatory. And here we can change what the LED indicators show, which is pretty neat. And in the macro section, we can record whatever with delays or not. And then you can assign those to a key in the edit section. And when you're all done, you can press build if you want to save it somewhere, or just press download and it will download onto the keyboard. It has a little bit of a load time as well, so it's not instant. It's not the sleekest, the most intuitive piece of software, but you know it works, but I definitely recommend you download it to chuck on the arrow keys. Back to the keyboard, I have Cherry MX Silent Reds in mind, but the good news is, in fact, a huge feature of this keyboard is that it's available in a range of key switches from Kale, Gateron, and Cherry MX, which is just so great to see. So we have Cherry MX Blue, Brown, Black, and Red, with Speed Silvers and Silent Reds coming later, Gateron Blue, Brown, Red, and Silent Brown, interestingly, with Blacks and Yellows coming later, and finally Kale Box Black, White, Brown, Red, and Jade, with more to come later again. So a really awesome mix, and they're all at different prices. I'd say if you want to go clickies, Kale, Box White and Jades are great. For linears, the Gatorons would be a good pick, but the yellows in particular are nice but aren't out yet. Anyway, here's the Cherry MX Silent Reds. Pretty quiet as expected. What I didn't expect was how decent they were in this. It's so typical for MX Silent Reds to actually not be that silent on these retail Macs, but they sound pretty decent. There is a hint of ping, and they do have that scratchy sound and feel, but that's just the switches really. The stabilizers are also a huge part of this, and they are factory lubed, so no rattle on any of these. Alright, let's take it apart. It has a classic tray mount design, so there's a couple of Phillips head screws under some keycaps. It did take me a while to get it out, as it is pretty tight. I found that pulling up the left shift key with a keycap puller worked. Alright, so we have the aluminium enclosure, and we get this dampening pad thing. Not sure what it's made of, but it's much thicker than the one in the Hades, and doesn't feel like just a sheet of felt. Anyway, whether this was the cause, in that there's noticeably way less ping, which is great, but I don't think it's thick enough that it changes how the keyboard feels. Then we have this plastic piece, don't know the reason, but it's there, and here's the base. The screw bosses are quite nice, but more interestingly, I'm curious how this was made. It has some curved elements, and also the space underneath where the LEDs shine through, so I guess this would have been casted, like the Poker 3 keyboards from Vortex, which also wasn't anodized, so maybe that explains it a little bit. It uses an aluminium plate rather than steel, which is quite often seen with aluminium cases. The PCB looks nice and clean. I always get asked this in videos, no this is not hot swappable, you will need to desolder your switches if you wish to replace them, and as the RGB LEDs are SMD, the switches are quite easy to desolder. And that's the Dogold Venus 60% RGB mechanical keyboard. 60% has become more and more common on the market with a lot of companies putting out their own. Still, I would say the most popular ones would be the Ducky 1-2 Mini and Pro 2 and the Vortex Pokers. 
Purely on build quality, if you prefer alu over plastic, then it beats out the Daki 1 2 Mini and the Anpro 2, and it has a very similar sort of build to the Vortex Poker keyboards. All of them have RGB backlighting, all have pretty decent keycaps, but these keycaps would have to be my favourite because of the shorter cherry profile, and they just feel great to use. The Venus is also available in a range of key switches, in Kale, Cherry MX, and Gateron, which is so awesome to see. And the typing sprints with a pad underneath and the keycaps again would have to be on par or better than those other options. And the finish is fine, but I prefer an anodized finish. So it all sounds pretty good, and comparing to its competitors, it is. It's great. It comes at different price points, starting at 100 bucks for the Gatoron versions and up to 140 for the Kalebox Jade in particular. So the AND Pro is still a great budget option for sure. The Ducky 1 2 Mini doesn't have a great build and has had some issues, and the Poker 3 is pretty pricey at around $140, so I gotta say they've made a really competitive 60% mechanical keyboard. <laughs>